Hello, Nation. Today, we're going to be talking about a Fresa. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Jeremy Pettis. We recently had a huge webinar, over 2,000 people, 38 countries, every state in the union, and one of the most commonest questions we had was about a Fresa by both people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So there's a lot of stuff on our website in the TCOID book. We're going to talk about it some more. Yeah. So I have a list of questions just to kind of make sure we cover everything and we'll just ping it back and forth. So I want to start with just the basics. What is a Fresa? Yeah, a Fresa in its simplest form is inhaled insulin. Insulin is in a powder form. It's in these different little packets and there are four different sizes, actually three, four, eight, and 12. We're gonna talk about dosing in a second. They simply uh, popped in this little device, you close it and That's it. And that's one of the beauty about a Fresa. Now, the cool thing. Yeah, that's my second question. I, I Why beat, is it I, cool? I beat you to it. <laughs> you know, I, and I'm being like uh, very serious when I say this, that it really uh, addresses an unmet need in type 1 diabetes because it has a rapid onset of action within 10 minutes. And it also has a pretty nice peak. But the key is, and a lot of people don't realize this, it gets out of your system super quickly. So what happens is your post-meal blood sugars are better and you have less delayed hypoglycemia. And I think one of the biggest frustrations for people with type 1, that the subcutaneous insulin just is too slow. Yeah, I think, you know, when we think about our, our rapid-acting insulins, pe people typically using Humalog, Novolog, it takes 30 minutes or so for it to even start working. It peaks in about an hour and a half to two hours. It hangs around for four or five hours. And you contrast that to a Fresa that starts working almost immediately. It peaks in about 30 minutes or so, and then it's out of your system in an hour and a half. So it's much more kind of rapid on, rapid off, which is, I think, the main benefit for type 1s. We've all had those frustrating stubborn highs. It just won't come down. So something that you can, you know, hit those, those stubborn highs quickly, bring them down, and then you get about, about your business versus the typical thing, which is bolus, 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 and then maybe like four hours, you come kind of eventually crashing down low. It's a huge pain. Yeah, you know, stacking our dose. We really discovered how slow subcutaneously injected insulin was when we got our CGM devices. Everyone kept saying, hey, my insulin's bad. It's not working. And so... This has made a huge difference in a lot of people in terms of improving their time and range, the percent of time between 70 and 180. I should mention the folks with type 2. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the insulin action curves in folks with type 2 is different than type 1s, mainly because uh, folks are heavier, there's insulin resistance, a whole bunch of other reasons. But folks with type 2 aren't used to taking shots. They don't like taking shots, not like we do. But if you're a type 1, You've had to take shots since the day you were diagnosed, since that's not a, a big deal. It's really the time course of action for us type 1s and the ease of administration for folks with type 2. Because a lot of folks with type 2 need mealtime insulin, but it's very difficult for them to put that into their daily routine. Yeah. So I think, you know, why it's cool for type 1s, it's really the rapid on, rapid off. It's just like a real quick hit out of your system. For the type 2s, it's the novelty, I think, of being inhaled. And, you know, if you start mealtime insulin in type 2, it's an option of not doing another injection. So let's get, I'll talk a little bit more specifically about how to dose this. And it comes in, in these three doses, as Steve mentioned, 4 units, 8 units, and 12 units. And one of the most important things, if not the most important thing to know, is that there's a conversion factor. So 4 units of a Fresa is not the same as 4 units of Humalog or Novolog. It's a ratio of about 2 to 1. Meaning that four units of Humalog is more, sorry, four units of Afreza is more like two units of Humalog or Novolog. Very important to know because if you don't know that, you'll underdose yourself. Yeah. So that's kind of step one. And when I tell my type ones, you know, what to do when they first start taking it, I recommend that all my type ones be on a continuous glucose monitor, that they pick a time that their blood sugar is high, and they just start with four units to inhale and just see how it affects their blood sugars. And if you have the CGM, you can see how quickly it brings it down, how, how much of a drop you get out of four units. So you can kind of have a correction factor. And that's a really good place to start. Yeah, you know, that's a, you know, people say, how do I start? That's a great way. You use it as a correction dose. And, you know, I think having a CGM, which is the standard of care for folks with type one, uh, you know, it just makes it so much easier. And, and, and like everything else, it may, it affects everyone differently and it may affect you differently 
depending on the day of the week. Yeah. So I tell people, whatever you're on, stay on that for now. You're on multiple daily injections or you're a pump. Stay on that. Don't make any radical shifts to doing a Fresa all the time at the beginning. Just get familiar with how quickly it works with the corrections. And then you might start gravitating towards using it at meal times. Nothing can combat that post-meal spike like a Fresa, you know, especially when you're eating a good amount of carbs. Yeah. And because it works so quickly, you actually can inhale it right when you sit down to eat or even 10 minutes or so after you eat which is very different than what we would tell people with Humalog or Novolog, dosing 30 minutes or so before a meal. Yeah, like who, who remembers to take insulin 30 minutes before you eat? It's a very good technique. If you can remember, that's awesome. Uh, but the timing is extremely important and much more convenient. So I, when anything that's more convenient is going to help you improve your time and range. So I find that when I start patients, they come back and tell me, I just like for, for corrections, or I loved it for corrections, so I started using it for meal times. And now I was on a pump, but I actually want to come off of a pump and use all, you know, a Fresa for every meal and every correction. There's no wrong way to do it, and there's a lot of different opportunities. So how do you use it, Steve, and or how do your patients use it? Yeah, well, first of all, <clears throat> what you said is exactly right. Everybody uses it uh, according to their own regimen. I'm on one of these hybrid closed loop systems where, you know, the CGM data goes to my pump and the pump gives me insulin automatically, modulates my basal rate. And a lot of the really smart software engineers will say, hey, that's going to mess up your algorithm. And um, from my personal experience, it doesn't mess up my algorithm at all. I, I take it on top of the insulin that's in my pump. When? When I'm eating something that I know that's going to jack up my blood sugars, something rich in carbohydrates, and all the time... Uh, probably once or twice a day to correct for a high. My blood sugar's heading toward that 180. I don't want it to wreck my time and range. I'm getting out the Afreza. Yeah. And um, I think I have, you know, in addition, a lot of my patients, they may take it as their only mealtime insulin, and then they use um, one of the injectable Traceva or two JOs as the baseline. How about you? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I find that a lot of my patients will use it with their pumps, actually. And they love to, you know, again, for those highs, your 300, you can bring it down so quickly. And on top of that, though, you can get really sophisticated, take it at the start of a meal, and then take a few units through your pump also to kind of cover the fat and the protein that, that might come a little bit later. So you wow. can get really kind of sophisticated. That's very it. sophisticated. I've seen, I've seen a graph on that. <laughs> um, so, the, again, there's there's many ways to skin a cat. But um, and, and the other thing, too, I'll just mention quickly is that because it gets out of your system quickly, if you do have a meal that's heavy in protein and fat, you may need what we call a follow-on dose, uh, whereas you know, you're know you still in the desirable range and then the trend arrow in your CGM goes up maybe an hour and a half later. Take another hit? Yeah, so a few more practical things about starting it. If you do start it, you have to get what's called an FEV1, a forced expiratory volume one, meaning you have to burrow into a little device as quick as you can in one second. <sighs> And it just tells you if your underlying lung function is normal. Now, people ask, why do I have to do that? Well, there's no evidence that, that a Fresa causes any lung damage or anything like that. But we do that to make sure you don't have underlying acute asthma or COPD. shouldn't be used in smokers. Um, you have to get that when you start, then after six months, and then every year thereafter. It's not a full lung test. It should just literally take one second. Yeah, it's not pulmonary function test. And a lot of doctors have the little device in their office. Yeah. If you're a smoke, a current smoker, you got bad asthma, you got bad COPD, it's not the right uh, insulin for you. So I, I think the point really is it's a very unique insulin. There's lots of different ways to, to use it. Providers, patients need to know more about it because in our opinion, it's, it's still very underutilized. Yeah, and, and a lot of doctors don't know about it. So I think you know that's why we educate folks living with diabetes at TCOID. So you could bring it up and talk to your caregiver about it. Yeah, and there's lots of information on the website and our book. We, we, we're going to do a whole dedicated um, uh, session on this at our one conference coming up in October also. So lots of information on Fresa. That's all I got. Yeah. So long, nation. So long. <laughs>